The year is 2012. You just bought a brand new Nissan Leaf. Zero tailpipe emissions and hey, life is good. But fast forward 10 years, it's now 2021. And your battery, which used to do maybe twice the mileage, is now getting only 40 miles of range out of a full charge. So what do you do now? I mean, some people say, time to throw that electric car in landfill, right? I don't think so. Stay tuned as we talk about where batteries go to die. My name is Martin Lee. Welcome to the channel. And if you like what we do here, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. And join us on Instagram. We are at best underscore electric vehicle. So for the past decade, EV naysayers have been drawing attention to the millions of EV batteries that one day, they say, will be thrown into landfill. Some people reckon after three or four years of being used. But what actually transpired is a very different story. EV batteries are holding up so much better than people ever anticipated. Early Nissan Leafs, early Renault Zoes and the likes are staying on the roads years and years after the naysayers said they'd all be thrown into landfill by now. Now, we're not going to go over how resilient some batteries are. We made a full video about that a few months ago. Go and check it out. Suffice to say that plenty of Teslas are doing well over 100,000. Sorry, did I say 100? 500,000 miles and still have plenty of their battery health left, some over 90%. This is obviously great news, but at the same time, it's suppressing an industry that is just waiting to be unshackled. EV battery recycling just hasn't experienced the necessary supply of all those used EV batteries yet, at least not to scale up like it will do one day in the future. So why is that? Why are we not recycling these batteries at volume? I suppose you could say that these batteries are increasingly like quality racehorses. When they finish their useful lives in cars, they're put out to stud for a few more years. So let's find out. Before we get on to talking about what happens when a battery has finished its useful life in a vehicle, let's think about when that is for a moment. It's not like a switch flicks overnight. The battery health goes from 100 down to zero. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a gradual process. And the reality is that a tiny range, even something like 30 miles, can be enough for so many people doing their daily journeys. So let's say you brought a Nissan Leaf in 2015, you do loads of miles, there's 150,000 miles on the clock, the battery's had some degradation, down to maybe 70% of its original capacity. Does it mean the car is useless? Well, if the car is in good condition, absolutely not. Consider most of the trips that you do, or maybe your family has a second car that's just used for the school run and picking up the shopping. So the end of life tipping point for EVs is much farther away than some people think. And fair enough, the car may not suit your needs anymore, but there's always somebody out there who will happily buy it off you because the range is plenty for them. So let's finally accept that the battery in your old Nissan Leaf just isn't worth running the car anymore. Or that maybe the rest of the car has had so much wear that it's just not worth keeping or repairing. Maybe you had an accident and the battery is still in fine health, but the rest of the car isn't. So this is finally where it goes to landfill. No, <laughs> actually, it's still worth loads of money. There's plenty of people and companies that want to repurpose that battery. Now, they might be hobbyists looking to convert an old internal combustion car to electric. Another is that they might want to use the battery for storage. We're going to have a look at energy storage now. In a nutshell, we're talking about taking battery packs out of used or crashed EVs and installing them in a house or a commercial building in a way to power the grid or your home. You may have already heard of an off-the-shelf version of this. Yes, the very famous Tesla Powerwall and many of its competitors, which might not be as well known, but are all great products. They're in high demand, and people love the idea of having a backup energy supply in their house. And there are plenty of uses for them, depending on where you live in the world. You can purchase cheap electricity overnight, charge up the battery, discharge it during the day when your rates are much higher, and you can save some money. You can even contribute energy to your house for a few hours in the event of a power cut, sometimes days, which is hugely beneficial. And you can use it to harvest energy that would otherwise go to waste, if you know what I mean. If you have solar on your roof, got some PV, but you can't use all of your generation, rather than going back to the grid, you can actually store it yourself to use later when the sun's gone down. 
So, many people are starting to use EV batteries for this purpose. It's just not as straightforward as just plugging in a AA battery like you would on your TV remote control. You need to be fairly proficient at battery electrics to make this a DIY project. But you could hire someone that is. The benefits are huge. And those benefits are not just to the owner of the battery. The longer the battery stays in use, the more it offsets its emissions from manufacturing and the raw material usage. Also, batteries will help balance national grids in the future. Typically, energy will be used when the strain is being put on the grid. So maybe, and there are trials and schemes like this already around the world, where you hand over control of your battery to your electric company or even the likes of Tesla, they will decide with an algorithm when is the best time to discharge to the grid and when is the best time to recharge their battery. Let's jump away from the theory and look at some of the practice of home storage and actually think a little bit bigger as well. Let's take a look at the Johan Cruyff Arena in Amsterdam. It's a 55,000 seat stadium that doubles up as a green energy producer and as a storage facility. The roof of the stadium is plastered with 4,200 solar panels. They harvest clean, green energy. But there's a huge amount of energy stored as well in the form of repurposed EV batteries. They took the old batteries from 148 Nissan Leafs and created storage of nearly 3 megawatt hours. That massively cuts down on the peak demand of the stadium. It helps balance the local grid. In the event of a power failure, they have three megawatt hours of energy on tap as well. This is hugely impressive, and it's only scratching the surface of what can be achieved. The Johan Cruyff Arena uses 148 Leaf batteries, but modern batteries are frequently much bigger than those old batteries. Rather than 20 kilowatt hours, try 70 or 100 kilowatt hours. And now we're producing EVs in the millions. The future is bright. We just need to wait to make it happen. So after years in an EV and then a good few more years in the home and commercial energy storage, batteries at some point will reach the end of their useful life. But thanks to the increasing longevity and robustness of batteries, the end of life moment just keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed. At that stage, they're finally ready for landfill? No! because the bits inside them are still valuable, so they're ready for recycling. It's a nascent industry and has barely had the chance to get off the ground yet, so only time will tell how the battery recycling industry shapes up at scale, either by carrot or stick. It's crucial that companies are ready to recycle the materials in batteries. It's all well and good to say that they'll be recycled, but the reality is that the materials have to be financially viable to break down and refine. But what's really interesting is we're seeing at the moment some new EV batteries are being built with recycled elements and they're performing even better. It's time to wrap up now and I'm pretty sure we've gone over time. <laughs> I just love to talk about this subject so much. We want to know from you now what you think in the comments below. Any aspects of the video that we can go into more detail and make another one? Do you have an EV? And if so, how is your battery faring? Do you have any battery storage at home? Maybe at work? Let's keep the conversation going in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching today. Oh, by the way, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. It tells us to make more like it and we'll see you on the next one.